All right, now we're going to move on to analyzing the residuals just a little bit more. Oops, not this part. We've already done this part. And we're going to be looking at outliers. So outliers, remember, are data points that lie far away from the rest of the group. Now, in bivariate data, data with two variables, there's a couple ways you can spot them. You can see it in the scatter diagram itself. Um, and this picture is really small, but let me zoom in for just a second, if I can. There we go. <laughs> All right, so it can be a little dot that's kind of far away from the rest of the group. Or um, in a residual plot, you can still see it. He's far away from the rest of the group. Or if this is a different residual plot, this is a box plot of the residuals. And again, you can see the dot way over there on the right. So that's a few more ways to identify outliers. So I have the following plots show airline industry revenues over various years. Now, what year was an outlier? Now, this is the scatter plot over here on the left. This is the residual plot on the right. But hopefully in both of them, you can spot the outlier from a mile away. And I'll actually insert a little circle around him so you can see him. He's right there. No feel for you. There we go. So that's where the little guy is, the, the outlier. Now, what year was that? Well, it was 2002. Um, um, it is far lower than the rest of the data points. That makes sense because 9-11-2001 was kind of at the end of that year. So it, the impact wasn't really felt by the airline industry until 2002 when a lot of people weren't flying on planes. Would a linear model be appropriate for this data? Oh, heck no. <laughs> right? Remember that residual plots, you don't want to see a pattern like this. And if you take out that outlier, this is a total U shape. That's no good, right? There's definite U shape pattern, so a linear model is not appropriate. All right. Now, there are special kinds of outliers called influential observations. So in order for an, inf an observation to be influential in statistics, it has to greatly affect the slope and or the intercept of the least squares regression line. Typically, this is a point that exists um, relative to both, well, it's really usually the explanatory variable. It's way out in the x direction, right? Far away in the explanatory variable direction. And in the y direction, it's off the path. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you have these points right here, and they form a path. And if your, well, if your y variable, actually, I think the easier one to see is b. If you've got these points that are forming a path, if that outlier is still on the path formed by the other points, then even though he's an outlier, for sure, he's not influential because he wouldn't cause the slope of the line to change greatly if all of a sudden that dot disappeared. So, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. So let's look at A for a second. A is not influential. The reason being because it's not far away in the X direction. You have to see kind of a big gap over here on the left or a big gap on the right for it to even be considered influential. And this is not influential. Okay. He's not far away. He's above for sure, but he's not far away to the left or right. All right. Letter B is not influential because even though he's far away to the right, see that big gap in there? He's on the path the other dots make. So that's no good to us. That's not influential. What about C? Now, C, I drew two lines just to give you a sense. The blue line here is just the points um, up here, the blue dots up here making that line. And then kind of a red line to include this pinkish dot down here. And what happens is when that pinkish dot gets thrown in the mix, the line kind of tilts over to accommodate for it. So this outlier is far away in the x direction, far to the right, but it's also off the path that the other dots create. That's very much an influential outlier. Okay. In other words, I wrote it down here, that outlier greatly affects the slope of the model. That makes it influential. Now D is the best kind because I gave you the lines, which is always nice. So I drew the lines for you and you can see that that year, 2002, was not influential, at least as far as statistics influential as if a definition is concerned, right? So obviously that had a big impact on the airline industry, but it did not greatly affect the slope of these lines, which is all I care about for our definition. So those slopes are not very different from each other, so that's not an influential point. All right, 
let's look at math achievement and GDP. Remember, this was the first problem we looked at in chapter four. And out here we have the lovely country of Qatar circled on the graph as requested. All right, so we have Qatar. Qatar is definitely an outlier, right? Do you see visually how far away that country is from the rest of the group? Uh, do eighth graders in Qatar perform well in this test? No, not very well at all, because they are far away from the rest of the group. They only score about 310. And like the SATs, it's out of 800. Um, so they didn't, they're not performing very well. They're doing less than 50% on average. All right, so two regression lines have been drawn. There's a dotted one and a solid one. Which one includes Qatar? And the answer is the solid line because Qatar is a low outlier. So including him causes the line to kind of tilt down to accommodate him. Right? Now, is Qatar an outlier? Yes, right, no question about it. Definitely Qatar is an outlier because it's far away from the rest of the group, hands down. Is Qatar influential? The answer is yes, definitely. Qatar is influential because when you look at the slopes, the slope with Qatar, the solid line, right, slope of that line, and the slope without Qatar, that slope of that dotted line, are very different from each other. Right? That means that Qatar was influential. It's having a great effect on the linear regression line. All right, now let's be a little bit clear. I wanted to go over this a little bit. So this is um, the infamous, <laughs> just trying to think, um, Bush versus Gore election. So if you might remember, um, in Bush versus Gore, in a particular county in Florida, there was some confusion over the ballot. Um, after it was all over, it was kind of a you know mess and people kept counting ballots and counting ballots and counting ballots for days and the race was too close to call and it became a, a national <laughs> crisis and eventually the Supreme Court stepped in and um, decided to stop the seesaw counting and then um, it was certified for Bush and George W. Bush became president. Okay, so when you look at this county, you can see these are the blue dots are all the counties in Florida except for this one. This red dot is Palm Beach County. So is Palm Beach County an outlier? No question about it. Yes, right? Palm Beach is an outlier because it's far removed from the rest of the data. See, And as you can see, um, Buchanan, who was one of the um, the other candidates, he was not a Republican or Democrat. He was um, a, an a, a alternative. There you go, an alternative candidate. He got a lot more votes in that county than the rest, and one of the reasons for that was confusion over the ballot. I don't remember the exact particulars, but I think it was something like it went Buchanan, Bush, Gore, Nader. Like they went alphabetically but where the dots were kind of confused people. And so they ended up voting for Buchanan when they meant to vote for Gore. So um, Buchanan got a lot higher results in this county than he would have expected. So he should have been down here somewhere. All right, so the following graph shows that same point, And then we have the red line that includes that point and the blue line that does not include that point. So was Palm Beach an influential observation? The answer is no because the slope of the line was not greatly affected. Slope and or the y-intercept, but the y-intercept isn't different either. All right, of course, this county was influential in real life, right? I mean, we wouldn't have had George W. Bush as our president without this county. I mean, this county really um, changed everything for everybody. So if that's the case, right, when, let me put it this way, when we discuss influential in statistics, we mean a very narrow definition of the term, um, i.e. Um, significantly changing or affecting, I guess I should say, affecting the slope and or 
the y-intercept. That does not mean that the value is not influential in other ways. Okay, it's sort of like when, um, way back, hold on, let me go way back to the beginning. Oops. Oh, hold on, there we go. Going back. There we go, right here. Nope, wait, no. I'm getting there. Aha, there it is. So way back here, we talked about there was no relation. But the, and I made the point then that's like, it's not like, yeah, there's no statistical relation, but there's a whole bunch going on here, right? This is important stuff about how the way and what the whys and hows of HIV working in the world, right? So, so even though the points are kind of scattered, there's a really interesting dynamic that's going on here. So it's not like there's nothing going on. It's just that it's no linear relation, which is all we are looking at, right? We've narrowed our focus very finely. Same thing with this particular problem that we're talking about now. It's not like that county didn't have influence. It had great influence. It's just not the kind of influence we're looking for, right? So when we're looking for influence, we're looking for a very specific statistical definition. All right. Okay, I'm worried about my ability to get through the next question in just a few minutes. Um, so I'm going to stop this video right here. And I'm going to, oops, and that's some junk email <laughs> right there. So I'm going to stop this video right here and I will pick up for the last question, which is that reading computer output question. All right, I'll see you here then.